throughout the video I'll show you different types of outdoor composters. Um, the one composter that I, I don't do myself is uh, what's called the black gold composter with the worms that you collect the, uh, the, the moisture underneath. Um, however, uh, I know that Harriet does that down in Texas and I've known a few other people to do it. However, I'm just going to be talking about dry composters for today and coarse composters. So it all starts, uh, well, you can do a bunch of composting in the garden, which I will talk about in the, the, the video itself while we're out in the gardens, um, but indoor composting. So we just have any old recycled bucket to, to start with and put anything that can be comp composted in here. So right here we have banana peels, we have a squash from last year um, that we ate last night, um, coffee grounds. So once this is full, then we go and we bring it out to the main composter, dump it in, give it a rinse, done. So it doesn't really take that much time out of your life. I like to put a lid on it. Uh, you don't have to put a lid. However, in the summertime, um, you will get a lot of fruit flies. So you want to be cognizant of, of that. So that just sits right here, not as I'm cooking and this and that, blah, 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 open it up, pop the compost and put the lid back on. Takes nothing out of my day. So when you're composting, why do we compost? If you're composting all your stuff, that's like a, a whole bunch of nutrients that you can use in your garden. I put the compost underneath all of my transplants. And when I'm planting my potatoes or seed potatoes or any seeds at all, I build the trench first and I will put my compost in there along with a few other things that I do as well. So the compost comes in handy um, and it saves you from buying a bunch of unnecessary fertilizers as well. So if you can figure out how to get a compost going, whether you make one yourself, um, and I have two examples of homemade composters in this video, or if you have a commercial, if you prefer the commercial kind, there are two examples of commercial kinds as well in this video. So um, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoy the video uh, that's going to follow from here. Okay, so this is um, it's very, very common for our most composters. We have this one and we've got this one over there. Um, it's very simple. You just lift the lid up and you throw everything in here uh, and uh, put the lid back on. And then there's, I'll just go to the back one here because you won't see that one. But you lift, it's frozen right now, but you lift this, pull this up and all the stuff is at the bottom already has all the composted stuff for you. Uh, there's slits in here which allow for aeration um, and it is a good idea to every now and then if you can go to the bottom lift it like pull up this bottom tray and kind of fork around in there a little bit with a, a pitchfork or a shovel um, or in the top you know lift it up and kind of mix it around if you can however the cracks along the sides are designed to be able to let the air in uh, we do add water sometimes you don't have to but especially if it's a dry year uh, we will throw you know a gallon or two of water in there to let things uh, decompose a little bit faster so it doesn't dry out uh, and if it's going to be a couple days of rain we also pull the lids off and let the rain water soak things out just keep things moving faster with composters you'll also get critters uh, for the last couple summers we've had a family of snakes living in our composters um, which sounds a bit gross, but I'll be honest with you, I kind of like the snakes around because they help keep the mice out of the garden because mice will eat, especially your beets and your carrots. Um, and they also keep the slugs at bay in the fall because they'll go after them. So I don't try to chase away the snakes, as gross as that sounds. The other thing though that uh, composters can attract is I know in the cities, um, composting is a little bit tricky if you have a rat problem because um, rats will go and live inside your composter. So if you're in the city and you know that there's rats in the city, it's probably not a good idea because you will have uh, some guests living in with you soon enough. This is what would be considered uh, what's called a barrel composter. You can take any barrel you want and then figure out how to put it up on some kind of rotary, uh, rotisserie kind of style and uh, cut a hole, put some hinges on it. You put all your compost in there. Compost does need aeration in a way to uh, get that fresh air. So drill some holes in the bottom like that. Uh, and yeah, you just have to fill it up and then spin it around every now and then. She has a locker here. Oh, this is Harriet's composter again. 
So you put the lock in there and then, you know, give it a spin now and then to uh, just kind of aerate it and get it moving, which will help it decompose a little bit faster. And to get it out, just open up the hatch and start digging it out and uh, put it under your plants or wherever it is you're going to use it. So it has this little knob, we pull off the top, she throws everything in there and uh, by the end of the summer it's all or the next year it's all decomposed and then she'll pull out and use what she needs to uh, put underneath her plants or to fertilize things as they're growing. Um, we also have, as you'll see in the video, um, or seen, um, oh here come Ben and Rex, they're playing tag. Wait for the camera! Anyway, so it's, it is actually a good idea to have a composter, some kind of composting system right near your garden to take all those scraps to go in. Woo! Okay everybody, so this is a coarse compost uh, situation. So this is at Harriet's house, like I said, Harriet and I co-garden. So um, what she does is she has three different compartments going, one's for different years. Well, each one is for a different year or different types of compost or things that break down at different at different times. So some stuff will break down fast, others not so much. Coarse compost includes things like if you're growing squash, there's a ton of vine that comes with it. So that would go in a coarse compost. We grow our own corn, so all the corn stalks, that is uh, coarse compost. It takes a lot longer to break down and you don't really want to put it in a mini composter. Um, leaves that you rake up, all those uh, fall leaves, that's considered cor coarse compost. So it does take a few more extra years to, for it to break down. So it's all that extra stuff that doesn't fit in your composter that you don't mind just letting it hang out for a couple of years and um, after about two or three years, you'll be able to use it. But there are also, as shown in this video, um, a variety of different ways to compost. So if you're big gardeners like us, having these coarse compost areas uh, is a really good idea to have. Oh. Yeah, and so how to use the coarse composter, you just throw all your stuff in there and then leave it. You can tarp it in the fall if you'd like to encourage it to decompose faster. However, like she has three compartments, so she doesn't really have to think about it. It just goes from year to year to year to year. I believe in fallen kings and hidden tombs. I believe